Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today I want to talk about making modifications to our knives. Now, I don't want to talk about it so much. I'll touch on this knife a little bit. Okay, you can see this is a Gail Bradley wearing uh, scales from Sharp Dressed Knives and an MXG clip. And I really like the changes that I've made to this. I think I made it a much better knife and more enjoyable for my own purposes. This, however, is not quite what I have in mind when it comes to making changes to your knife because none of these changes are irreversible and none of these changes are, uh, you know, potentially damaging to the knife. However, there are other knives that come with different challenges and I'm going to bring these guys in in a couple of minutes but for now let's move these off to the side and focus on the CJRB Agave. So this is a pretty cool knife it's got a decent action it's nice looking the aluminum is slightly textured it's a little slick I, I haven't reviewed it yet so I, I guess I shouldn't go into a mini review here but the biggest challenge that I find with this knife is this choil right here it's massive uh, to be a sharpening choil just seems crazy for it to be this big. Uh, and so is it a finger choil? Well, the, the shape of the blade kind of makes me want to think, hey, this is a finger choil allowing me to choke up and I've got a nice ramp for my thumb out here. However, it's too small to serve as a proper finger choil. So it's too big to be a sharpening choil, too small to be a finger choil. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to make a change here and I'm just going to make this cut out a little bit larger. You can see there's quite a lot of space here, you know, a good 330 seconds or so. And if I remove that material out of there, uh, it won't make any changes to the way the flipper functions, but it will give me enough room for a finger up here, which I want. So uh, this is a knife that I feel like it makes sense to make that change. Uh, and there are a couple of further reasons that I should add here. So I could just be like, yeah, I think the fingers toil is too small and then pass this on to somebody else so that it's their problem. I don't really feel good about that. I would prefer to fix it. And then, you know, I may still sell it. I may still pass it on, but at least the next person in line isn't getting a knife that uh, has some feature that's not working properly. Uh, I could just leave it, you know, I mean, I could give it away. I could, yeah, there, there are options that I have, but I feel like the best bet here is to make a very slight and fairly easy modification, but it will be irreversible. And that does make you think, well, you know, what if I, what if I mess it up? Um, and, you know, so that's, that's definitely something to think about. Now I want to grab a couple of other knives that demonstrate, uh, similar but opposite problem. All right, here's the Spyderco Amalgam. I really, really like the Amalgam. It's one of my favorite Spydercos. However, it's fairly well attested that the detent on this knife is a little soft. And so the question becomes, do I take this thing apart and try to adjust the detent? There are a number of ways you can try to do that. Uh, the simplest way on this would just be to try and press the detent ball further out. Okay, if this is the if this is the lock bar and here's the detent ball, okay, maybe I want to push it out a little bit more so that it engages deeper in the detent hole in the blade. Okay, now a couple of things about that. One, you could push the detent ball out. You could you could render the knife uh, completely useless. Now you can buy detent. Uh, you can buy little ceramic balls online and maybe that's a good option to go to before you start the process in case you break it or lose it you can at least replace it um, but that's you know that's a question that i think is a little tougher to answer furthermore it's tougher to answer because i don't re it doesn't really bother me i f i feel like this knife is completely functional it it's not uncomfortable it's not hard to deploy i i don't really you know my my complaint about the detent is a fairly minor one and the knife is totally fine as it is. Now the other knife I want to bring in is the Old Guard. Okay here's a knife where this is the Monterey Bay Old Guard. Really beautiful looking knife. I love this design uh, and I love the knife a lot. I like it more now though when I, than when I first got it. So people have complained, I'm not the only one, about the detent being insanely strong on this knife and they're not wrong. It's a very stiff detent. However, this one is much better than it was when I first got it because when I initially got it, um, I took it apart as I usually do to clean up and, and uh, oil and lubricate. Um, when I took it apart though, you could pretty clearly see and feel a full sort of a burr all the way around the detent hole. All right. So 
What I did was just take some sandpaper and gently clean off that burr very carefully so that I wasn't messing up the finish on the knife or causing any other issues. But I cleaned up that burr and it made a big, big difference. And that, you know, this is something you could also do, just a knife that has a really stiff detent, you could soften the edges of that detent hole a little bit and that can, that can improve the situation for you. Now, let me say this. If you're watching this thinking, yeah, maybe I'm going to do that to my knife, you know, you're dealing with differences of thousands of an inch here. So it's pretty easy to mess it up. You can end up getting, you know, you can end up, you know, removing the detent completely. So your knife now hardly has any detent. Or on the other hand, you could, you could end up making it so stiff that you can't, you know, you got to think that it's such a small, small ball in the first place and making any kind of change. Okay. Could, could cause you some problems. So these are some other examples of potential modifications that you could make. And the reason I bring up these particular modifications is because they're permanent, right? Once, once you remove that material, it's gone forever. Once you make those changes, you've, you've voided your warranty for sure. And <laughs> you have altered the knife irreversibly. All right. Now, what considerations would go into making that decision? And that's where I want to spend the rest of our time. Um, and, and let me point out that with a knife like this, the considerations are fairly minimal, right? Do I, am I going to like it better? Can I afford it? All right. Because the fact is, if I, if it turns out that I don't really like this and I want to change it back to factory, or if, you know, I decide to sell this and the person who buys it doesn't like the changes, it's really, really easy to put this right back to factory spec. All right. Once you make the changes that I'm talking about here, forget it. That knife is done for, right? If you mess it up uh, or if you just don't like the changes you've made, it doesn't matter. You're stuck. Okay. So, uh, what, what are the considerations that I would want to go through? So first of all, would it make the knife way better or would it make the knife, you know, totally perfect for you? All right. So the amalgam, the, where I, I'm highly, I'm really hesitant to make any changes to this because I already like it. I already enjoy it. And it's, it would be such a minor change, like a slightly stiffer detent isn't going to, you know, be, be an earth shattering change for this knife. So it's probably not worth it. Okay. At least for me, some people, it maybe would be worth it, but so is it going to make the knife vastly better, right? Perhaps on a knife like this, uh, you know, I heard some people who really could hardly open their Monterey Bay old guard. Well, in that case, that's a, that's something where you go, well, you know, I really like the knife. It's probably worth attempting the modification because as it stands, this knife is hardly of any use to me. Right. So that that's again, that needs to be considered and thought through as you decide. So will it make the knife way better? Secondly, can you do it? OK, do you have the tools and the skills to make the changes that you want to make? And, you know, all of us will have different resources and there could be like a machinist watching this who, you know, could mill his own scales and, and redo anything that he messes up. And in that case, right, if you're a machinist with access to a full shop, well, you know, you can have a lot more confidence because if you do something wrong and you have the ability to remanufacture that piece, well, guess what? You go nuts. You can kind of do whatever you want. Maybe you could make the whole knife again from scratch. For most of us, we've got to figure out what's going to be required to do this job. And do I have all of that? And do I have the skill to, to use all of that stuff? All right. Uh, and that's an important consideration. And, and you know, maybe, maybe you have a friend or a family member or, or a coworker or something that you can ask about that who, who has some tools or has some machining background. All right. So that's, that's another big consideration. The next is, is the cost exorbitant, right? Uh, you, you, number one, even with changes like this, all right, you're probably not going to get most of your money back. Now I will say these scales from sharp dress knives are quite affordable and look amazing. So I'm happy to spend that money more than happy. Uh, and I, you know, that's an easy change that I would recommend. You know, if you have a knife that you really love, but you want to just personalize it a little bit, scales are a great option. And of course, sharp dress knives is a great option to get them, to source them. All right. But are you going to end up, 
you know, let's say, you know, the amalgam I think is like 170 bucks. So am I going to, let's say I spent another hundred dollars on this. Now I've got a $270 knife. You really got to seriously ask the question, you know, for almost $300, is there just another knife I'd rather have? right? That maybe you go, let's just sell this and I'll put that money plus some more money toward a knife that I want even more. Uh, and, and very often, right? You can, you can end up spending hundreds of dollars on a knife and now you've got like a $500, $600 zero tolerance or Spyderco or something that isn't going to care, isn't going to bear that in the marketplace, number one. And number two, isn't going to perform as well as if you just went out and spent the, the three or $400 on a totally different knife. All right. And then finally, the last consideration here is what are you going to do if you don't make the modification? You go, well, I'll just sell it and make it somebody else's problem. And that may be a good solution, but you need to tell people. So if let's say I hadn't cleaned up the burr on this and the detent was still insanely strong, uh, it's still pretty snappy. Like you can, you know, uh, if I, especially if I put my fingers on the lock bar, this has a pretty stiff detent. Um, so if I'm going to sell this, guess what? You got to disclose that kind of thing. I'm just not going to feel good about it. By the way, look at how beautiful this knife is. I absolutely love this knife. Um, sorry, I'm just getting distracted by the, the image of the, the great Laconico design here that I do really, really enjoy. But if I'm going to pass this on to somebody, I'm going to have to disclose it, right? Even this knife with the smaller opening there, I'm going to show pictures of this and they're going to go, oh, that's a cool looking knife. And I would say to someone, if I was going to sell this, hey, look, you just need to know that finger choil does not fit my fingers. So maybe if your fingers are smaller than mine, you might be okay, but I want you to know going in that it might not work for you. So the, the next question really does become, if I don't make this modification, what am I going to do with the knife? And that that's something you got to think about as well. So those are the things that go through my mind as I contemplate making uh, a significant change to a folder. How much I like it, what, how much impact is the change going to make, how much is it going to cost me, uh, what am I going to do if I don't sell it. So there you go. I hope that's helpful to you guys. I hope that uh, it is, it's worthwhile. And again, uh, perhaps some of you want to weigh in if you're a machinist, if you're a knife maker, if you're something like that who can make all these changes. Uh, let us know the changes you've made, why you've made them, and whether you think it's worth it. Or, you know, even if you do have the tools, perhaps your time is better spent elsewhere and your money is better spent elsewhere. Love to hear all of that down in the comments. Don't forget to check the channel sponsor. We're going to go with DLT. Uh, great company. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, arrangement with DLT is a huge benefit to the channel. So uh, please use that link, check them out, get yourself something cool. Uh, I don't get a discount. Sorry about that, guys. So don't overspend, please. But there's a lot of stuff that DLT carries that you just can't get anywhere else. So in that case, that's why I feel pretty good about sharing that link. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.